I would like to introduce everyone to our biggest fan. He always got jokes. Love it. <laughs> Bennett's. As you can see, the place is still a train wreck, but we're getting it together and we are actually working on cars as it goes. I'm gonna have Bobby show you the Mustang, we tore it up pretty good, and the Cornette is now completely the part and on the rotisserie. So let's have a look. Uh, I've cut the... <laughs> For the last couple of days, I've been cutting out the floorboards and the tow boards and the torque boxes. I've got almost all of it cut out. i got a little trimming up to do. And uh, that'll be all for taking the floors and the tow boards and everything out. All right, I've cut all the uh, aprons off, the core support, everything comes off. It's almost time to start putting the torque boxes in. The torque boxes, these are the old torque boxes. And you can see they're, they're in pretty bad shape. Are the new torque boxes. There's one. The other one's laying back there beside this thing. It's pretty simple if you know what you're doing. Make sure everything's lined up correctly. And uh, this is the new apron. We've got two of these. And you can get all these separate parts, but it's just easier to do it all in one. This is a tow board. First, the torque box goes under the car. Tow board sits on top of the torque box like so. And then the floorboard goes on top of the tow boards. I gotta finish cutting the trim off the, the torque box. It's easier to get to it if you just cut everything off. And then you can go back and get to the rivets a little easier and grind them off. Rivets. Spot welds. <laughs> Whatever. Same thing. Nah. That's about it. This sleeve and this glove is on here because when you're drilling stuff, little fragments will come off and they're hot and they burn your skin. I've got welder sc welding scars all over my arms. White spots. They're everywhere. And I just finally got tired of it. Didn't want to get burnt no more. After I'm all scarred up, I buy the equipment to save myself from scarring up. It's like you don't need safety glasses until just after you needed them. You don't need a parachute to go parachuting, but you need one if you want to go twice. We tore that down with the use of the forklift there, just kind of drove through it and shook it all to pieces. Reused all the lumber, the two buys, and made shelves for our pallet jacks. This is where our paint booth's going. Is, is right here. We've got some repairs to do and finishing the tin and I've got a, actually got a roofing company coming that perhaps we're going to rubber coat the roof because there is a leak right here and I really don't want that leaking on my $45,000 paint booth. So there's that. And like as you can see, you know, we still have a lot of stuff. I have no idea how I got all this stuff in a 3,500 square foot building. No clue trying to get things arranged so both of us can work and put a couple more people on and we're really gonna turn a lot of work out of here. So we're looking to expand our team here a little bit. If you live in the Nashville area and you can be here at eight o'clock in the morning and leave here at five, we are looking for an experienced body man. No prima donnas. Nobody here is gonna be a prima donna. It's a fun place to work. You gotta have a passion for old cars and, and have some skill. We're looking to put on one to two people and one to two apprentices, which I think I already have picked out, but we're looking for body guys. Tell your friends, show them the videos. If they wanna make some money, give me a call. CSI is just Scooby-Doo for grown-ups.
it's a train wreck around here right now, but I want to show you why we do this. And the reason being, we're old. Got these from uh, Weaver Equipment. I got two more coming because we've got enough cars to put on three rotisseries and probably still be short, but we don't want to get it overboard. There's a real good gear reduction in here. You get the car set up right. You can turn it with one hand with very little effort. I can put this car completely upside down, on its side, whatever I want to do. This way I can stand up and work on the roof. Don't worry about all that noise, it's just some other stuff. And you can bring the car all the way. Don't worry about that. This is easier than vacuuming. You just turn it upside down, all, all crap falls out. So, now I don't have to vacuum the car out. But now you can see the rust in the roof, like I said, we can get to it. I'll turn the car back up a little bit, but we can get to it. I can take all this roof, work on this roof. On the bottom of the car, on the, which is now the side of the car, we can clean everything up on the bottom. I don't know if you can get into it. You got it. Pull the motor, transmission, and front suspension all is one piece. We're going to break that down and get started on that. Anyway, this is the bottom of the car. Uh, as you can see, it makes it really super easy for us to get to everything. We're going to clean this up. We've got a little bit of jack damage here uh, that, that somebody did. We'll, we'll get that pulled out and just make the underside look as nice as the top. It's not going to be shiny black because it's not, I mean, it's going to be something that she drives. It will be all clean, all repainted, basically look like a new car. Um, this this one's going going pretty quick simply because you know like I said in a previous video the car is just in exceptional condition it's just crazy how clean this car is we still have debris everywhere but slowly slowly but surely we're getting floor space getting things put up on pallet shelves over here instead of trying to store it in bins and boxes and having to move it around uh, we moved one of our the four post lift up here. The two post lift was supposed to be moved today, but we got put off. He's coming tomorrow to move the two post lift up there. So we're gonna have tons of room for activities down here. Look at the lights. We put in um, four LED high bay lights. They're uh, 33,000 lumens a piece. They are bright. You don't wanna look at them. And then on the side here, we've got some eight foot 14 four lumen led lights you got to be able to see the side of the car so the light from the top while it lights up the building it doesn't really help us on the sides of the car these will be a little bit better on the sides of the car as as we go along we keep moving stuff around and finding some place better to put it and you know just trying to maximize all this space just moving into a bigger garage i don't want to spread stuff out just because it's bigger i want to utilize that that extra space in the next coming videos you'll see more and more cars in here because in my I have a, a 3,000 foot storage garage over here all the cars are in there so as we get room we'll slowly be bringing them in and we'll have a lot more to talk about I know that Bobby's keeping the place afloat while I do silly stuff building shelves and doing what I got to do so Bobby's keeping us going right now which is which is good Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. Between 11 and 1. That's fine. Okay, we'll do it then. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Okay, bye. That was Mike Fleming. He's coming tomorrow at 11 o'clock so we can get his impressions on the car. I'm sorry, I don't do impressions, but uh, <laughs> some people do. But anyhow, Mike's coming out tomorrow. We're going to take a look at what's going on with his car, and he should be, here's hoping, pleasantly surprised. Bobby, what have you ripped off the car now? Uh, removed the whole firewall. It was rusty pretty bad, about halfway up, and that's part of the structure of the front end of the car so it's better just to replace it that's the firewall yeah all this rust right here this these holes that he's drilled these tick out the spot wells to get the firewall out but this rust in here without taking that firewall out we'd never gotten to that rust so that's 
rust never sleeps, so that would just continue. Um, and over time, get worse, and we don't want it to, so we're kind of building a whole new Mustang. Not kind of, we are building a whole new Mustang. So it's uh, it, it's what they it's call inner granular rust. Inner granular rust, it could very well be. We discovered this before we started taking the firewall out. Um, there's what appears to be an electrical outlet cover on the firewall. Bobby's going to take it off and just show you what's behind it. Considering what else was done to this car throughout its life, the fiberglass on the floors and so forth, this isn't a huge surprise that somebody would have done this. Uh, apparently it was an AC car or it's an AC firewall or AC meaning air conditioning, but um, anyhow, those two holes there would be for something that they didn't want there to be anymore. But we're going with vintage AC in this car, so everything's pretty much going to be inside the car anyway. We'll deal with that when we get to it. But we're waiting on CJ's Pony Parts to send us a firewall uh, so we can start getting this car back together. Some parts you can get relatively quickly. CJ's is usually pretty quick on getting us parts. Uh, three days maybe. Um, I've got the Corvair over in the storage barn there and and the the issue with that is I can't deliver the car because the mirrors are on back order. So I have to wait until the mirrors come and then I can deliver that car. But th these are the things you're going to run into. It's stop work. You know, we bought a bunch of parts to begin with so we wouldn't have to worry about stopping throughout the process. We get this far and go, uh, well, we can't do tow boards because there's rust too far up the firewall. So the firewall comes with integrated tow boards, which will mate nicely to the floor that we've already bought, replacing a lot of metal on this one. But it's a New Jersey car, so that's, that's why it is what it is. Uh, we're finishing the building. We should be done this weekend. We're doing airlines and some other stuff and moving stuff again for like the hundredth time. We put some new lights up uh, up there, <laughs> LED halos. Don't look! And this corner over here, this is where the paint booth's going to go. We're going to orient it so you enter from here. Uh, so we still got some workspace over here and whatnot, but... We're getting there. This 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 part of the building has been kind of ugly since day one, and we finally finished the metal and the wood belt line. And like I said, we got to put up some more airlines and and get stuff arranged. And next week we should be good to go. All right, I got to get back to work on my mighty forklift. Ready? Ready. Take one. Oh, there we go. Mike and June's Mustang. Take one. Working with Bennett's Hot Rod has been a lot of fun. You know, I like this. I'd like to think that I'm a car guy. I'm really not. I'm just a guy who really likes cars. And I found uh, this car, and I was looking for someone to help me uh, do some body work on it, and I stumbled across. Um, uh, Jim and the team here, Bobby, and I just really enjoyed um, talking with them, working with them, made me feel comfortable. I actually came in to the shop just to get a quarter panel done because in my brain I was going to redo this myself, and I quickly realized uh, yeah, that's that's out of my <laughs> out of my skill sets, um, and, and I learned that just by talking with Jim and Bobby. I learned a lot about what's going on with the car, and it's not that anything here I guess can't be done by someone who really really has the desire to do it I think that's a lot of it um, 
I just it was just beyond me. So I'm very very happy that I've found them. I'm very happy that they're willing to uh, to to take a, a simple. 60 egg Mustang and redo it for me. I know that they are into the hot rods and the nice cars and that kind of thing. Um, but that's just the kind of guys they are. Uh, they'll tell you the truth and then they're willing to uh, take my car and redo it. Coming in and seeing my car disassembled, obviously it, it makes me tear up a little bit. <laughs> you know, I, I can't see the finished product quite yet. Both uh, Bobby and Jim look at me and go, oh yeah, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to look great. And I'm going, yeah, I see a hunk of metal with rust everywhere. <laughs> but they're seeing it the finished product and I think that's part of their skill set is to be able to see this and see what it can be not what it is and to me that's something that they bring to the table um, they're just not mechanics they're not just body fixers I mean they're artists honestly and they can take something like this and I can't wait to see what it looks like in the end I'm just I'm dying to see it actually I just found them on the web <laughs> I drove by his shop and I saw some of the cars that were outside and I thought that looked cool and then I happened to find some other cars. I think I saw one of the cars he did at a local car show and his work just totally blew me away and I thought this is kind of what I want. I wanted, I want it done right, you know, I'm not a perfectionist, I'm not, you know, going to, well I may win a car show with it, I don't know. but. but I just want it done right and I want, I bought this car so my wife can drive it. So I want it to look classy, I want it to be sharp, but I want it to be safe. So anyway, he told me he could make it uh, drive a whole lot better than it did and look like it used to. I like the fact that they just tell me as it is. I mean, it's just like, you know, I walked in and he said, yeah, like I said, I wanted to do a just a quarter panel and he looked at it and he said, yeah, I don't want you throwing good money after bad. We can do that, but if you do that, you're going to have this and this and the other problems. And by the way, you've got rust here, and you're going to have a problem here. He wasn't trying to upsell me. He was just pointing out the way it was. And I like that. I like just knowing the way it is, and we can deal with the situation if I just know what's going on. And i just glad I tell you what, it, what, it, what it's like. Well, I've learned a lot about the restoration process. First of all, um, as much as I like the car, I know that... <laughs> I, I, I couldn't do what he did. I did do some drilling on it, I did do some work on it, but um, the one thing I learned was it, it's going to take longer than you think and you're always running into something that you didn't plan for. Um, it's just always something different. Uh, but I learned to stay focused, <laughs> believe it or not, to look to the, to the finish and that's what I'm looking for. Is I'm looking forward to wait to see this thing finished and read and seeing my wife driving it and that's when I'll see it all come together. Oh we're gonna go for a drive. I'm gonna I'm gonna drive. She's gonna sit right beside me. What a roll the wind is down. And uh, you know, she's shaking her head no, but yes. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go um, we're gonna go right around town. Um, I can't wait. I think if people would just come by, talk with them, um, tell them what they're thinking, what the, I mean I, there's a wealth of information here from experience. It's not from reading books. It's not, well, I'm not reading books or not. I don't know that way. But I, what they know is from experience. And to me, experience counts for a lot. And just come by, talk to the guys, you know, tell them kind of what you're thinking, what you're wanting. And, and if, 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 if you're a guy like me who doesn't know a lot about cars and you're, you're really interested in buying one, Talk to them before you go and buy one because you can learn a lot what to look for, what not to look for. And if you got uh, repair work, wait to bring it so that you finish with mine first, okay? <laughs>